Good afternoon, everybody. Here we are back again at um, First Minister's Question Times, and I'm joined today by Stuart Lockhead, Norrie Stewart, and myself, Phil Attridge. Um, and very, very interesting day to day. Um, first of all, we'll start with Stuart on, um, well, what did you think on their performances? Mm, performances. I've forgotten about that. <laughs> 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 Joanne. Well, the content was very different, so I suppose we, we, this is all, of course, this is all about the Rami, about um, whether there was legal advice, whether there wasn't, what was said, what wasn't said uh, by um, either Nicola Sturgeon or even Alex Salmon. So, I mean, it's just a steely Rami. But uh, yes, uh, Joanne was confident. Joanne Lamont, she was definitely confident. She felt She's had the backing of all the press for the last few days, attacking Salmond. Um, they, she's getting away with the, the Labour Party and the Tories are getting away with calling um, Alex Salmond a liar and not in, in Parliament. And nothing's been done about it. I don't know why you can't do that in Westminster. I don't know why you can allow it to do it in Hollywood. So she she she, she was confident. Um, when I think about Ruth, Ruth was uh, quite savage. I mean, I, I missed half of what she said, and even Salmon said he could only make out 12% of what she said, because whatever she was saying, I think the Tories behind must have been banging their desks, I don't know. She, she seemed to be uh, overconfident, shall we say. Of course, Willie Remy didn't get a, didn't get a shout. Oh. Salmon was confident to start with, but at the end of um, his answers to Joanne Lamont, he started to get angry. And he, he stood up straight, and, and he could tell that he was getting angry. He made his, a bit of a passionate speech about getting out from underneath Westminster and all the rest of it. So, um, performance-wise, yeah, that's my synopsis to start with. There's loads of content to come. Well, right. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm going to now do an imitation of Joanna Lama. Oh, no, your eyes aren't glued to it. No, she, she, I'm sorry, she didn't look confident to me at all. No. And she had no reason to look confident. Um, I wasn't impressed at all with her. I mean, you can't, you can't keep taking the same line and expect to have the attention on yourself. There's plenty of other ways to attack Salmond on the same subject. Nobody took it. Nobody took it. As for Babe Ruth, Jesus. I mean, that was nasty. Oh, that was nasty. A savage sheep, you think? Well, obviously she got a lot of press for her 12%. Oh. Um, sorry, let's put it the other way. 88% of Scots don't contribute. <coughs> and I think that's what she's looking for. I think she's looking to up her profile. Um, I mean, she basically accused Salmond of attempting to give some law officer a blowjob. Yeah, that was it. <coughs> Um, compared him to Nixon, compared him to Clinton. I mean, it was absolutely outrageous. And I'm sorry Willie Rennie wasn't there. And he might have provided a bit of um, sanity and diplomacy. Because he would have acted like a politician. I mean, I, on, on the, the television, recently when he's been interviewed, he's had a much more statesmanlike approach. But frankly, that was disgusting today. Yes. It's not the kind of politics I, I want to see. In I did. I did miss out the fact that Salmon definitely started very statesmanlike. It was quite yeah. clearly the, his policy was to be statesmanlike. It was very. He, he wasn't. Uh, he wasn't aggressive towards Joanne Lamont. He was. He kept saying, "I'm being nice to her." And, and but, it, but, but I mean, it, the the thing for me here is the elephant in the room. Well, it's not an elephant in the room. It's bloody obvious if you think about it. But none of the media have touched on it. Obviously, none of the opposition parties are going to touch on it. They all got duped. He suckered them. They walked right into it. They'd been running about, taking their eye off a ball that didn't even exist. They've done what a lot He's of politicians them. don't He's do. Them. They don't read the fine print. They don't read the reports. Either that or it's deliberate. No, um, he's had them. He's had them. Oh mis yeah. It's mis classic misdirection. They're all running about thinking that, oh, he's got advice then, he doesn't even want to publish it because it doesn't suit his, his stance. Actually, no, I've not got any advice, but I'll tell you what, you go and put 30 researchers on it. You get your guy that's put in 30 uh, freedom of information requests to concentrate on this, so he's not concentrating on anything else. Every single one of them have been wrong-footed by him. 
Well, that, that's, a, that's, not a, that's, a, that's a fair angle because they, uh, that assumes they actually know what they're talking about. But I must admit, the, the beginning of the week, bearing in mind we've also had the two, uh, the NATO U-turn and the, the two resignations. Which, which have disappeared. Not mentioned. Oh, not mentioned today, that's true. Not mentioned. Well, two, two, two resignations on that, I would, have, I would have thought, is neither here nor there. That's fair enough. Normally, that would be... It's not, it's not a point. For, uh, yeah, but if you're actually having a look on, on the scale of things, that's fair Everybody enough. has concentrated on one thing. And one thing... And the accusation that, he, that Sam and lied. That's what the accusation is. So it's that, all boiled down to that. Yeah, and, and, it, and it's what really worries me. Um, I mean, I know he's... He's allowed that perception, but that's fine. Um, as as Nori just said, he's, he's suckered them. But what worries me is you've got the leader of the opposition, Joanne Lamont, um, and you have the other leader of the other opposition, the joint opposition, Ruth Davidson. Um, and unless they're lying and making it all up, which is worrying, they're both completely legally incompetent. They can't actually read um, what's in front of them, and that's really surprising with... Joanne Lamont, considering her head, is always glued to a bit of paper. And what's worrying as well is how many of her ex-pupils, because she was a teacher, now have a job? Because if she can't even read what's in front of her as a leader of the opposition, what hope is there for her kids? I thought, like Noreen, I thought it was absolutely appalling. They're, they're, they're bringing the Scottish Parliament down to the gutter on their joint unionist hate-filled agenda. And I think it's absolutely disgusting. Well, it was. I, think, I thought the behaviour was particularly it's bad. A que it's a question of competence. Right? The journalist who had the interview, Andrew Neil, we'll start with him. Nobody has asked the right question. Okay? So he admitted them this morning on live radio that he didn't ask the right question back, back in March when he made the interview. Did. The question he asked was not specific to a, a legal advice on the EU. He asked, Have you taken legal advice? Sam has said, Yes, in terms of the debate. And then he got interrupted. And and that and that's been happening all week as well. Nicholas Sturgeon, all the rest of it. Everybody's been getting they interrupted. Don't, they can't. You don't, you don't get a chance to give an answer. They don't no. want answers. No. They want to follow an agenda. But the other one is the question that should have been asked today in Parliament was. They they must have all read the ministerial code by now. If you want to, it's paragraph two point three five. Very plain. The question they should have been asking is, why didn't you ask? The, who was he? The advocate? Frank Mulholland. Well, Frank Mulholland's permission to tell us you didn't have legal advice. So, um, Nicholas Sturgeon went into Parliament and said, I now have permission from yep. the, the senior law officer so I can tell you we don't have any advice. Nobody asked that question. So they weren't smart enough to think about finding out if there was any information there. So Simon, it would be much more difficult for Simon to say at this point, oh, I didn't ask because I wanted to take the piss out of you. Oh, yeah, I mean, you could, they could have asked the question, but that made them look stupid. But the most relevant question is, why did you allow all this time the perception that you have asked for advice to stand? No, they've asked that. that yeah, but if they've they've asked that, asked that, then they've been shown to be really stupid. And that's, well, that's yeah, he has. That's he's, why they're so angry. They're trying. You're right on that score. They're, Minori's right, because, and that's yeah. why the opposition is so angry, because uh, they've been completely wrong-footed on that, because they, they, nobody, nobody asked the right question at the time. Is there any legal advice? But then, as the, and the ministerial code says in black and white, you're not even allowed to say whether there is or there isn't. He can't, he can't even say that there is. But there's, 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 there's another, because I'd like it, was, it was a statement that Joanne Lamont said, when she said, that, she always says it, the people of Scotland demand. Now, you can say that if you represent the people of Scotland. That's quite plainly on 25%. Joanne Lamont does not represent the people of Scotland. She's forgotten the Labour Party no but, longer runs Scotland. But, yeah, exactly. Well, it's, it's the arrogance. <laughs> Whereas the actual uh, SNP government do represent. Um, so who is she actually representing, or is she representing the tail between the legs? But, we hate you, we hate you, because you're in our position in Labour. Um, it's... it's, it's it's very, very worrying. It's but that's part, that's part of the whole mantra of Labour. I mean, this, you, must, you must take part in the debate. And no, we've laid out our policies, they're within our budget, we've been voted in, we are in charge, we are the Scottish Government, we'll do exactly what we said we would do in our manifesto. Why should we discuss it with you? When did Labour ever discuss anything with anybody? But everybody really? knows it's a mistake, we should be in charge. Come to policy. I mean, the whole thing's ridiculous, and quite frankly, 
you know, when, when this is looked back on a year from now, they're going to look like complete and utter huddies. They really are. They're, I, don't, I don't get why they keep asking the same question that they know won't be answered. They know it won't be answered. Why don't they take a different tact? And, you know, Andrew Neil is now a celebrity, not a journalist as far as I'm concerned. Mm. It's all about his ego. So that's another scratch off. What's the point of watching that? He actually cut the SNP guest off and laughed when he did it on Monday on uh, yeah, but the whole thing is politics. Did you see no, that? No, that was Jamie Hepburn yesterday. At, at, at five minutes to one or just before the, 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 the trail, they were asked the Prime Minister's questions and they trailed that they were having somebody on from the SNP to be interviewed about this topic and they, they left it to the very last minute they brought guy, this guy, Jamie, Hep Jamie Hepburn, on, who tried to explain. He asked him a question. Jamie Hep Hepburn starts to explain. He interrupts him. Didn't let him answer the question. I mean, it, we sit here, week in, week out. We're not even professional interviewers, and yet we give each other time mm -hmm. to answer a question. But is it not? It's, it's the unholy alliance of unionism. No, but, you mean, can did, go right this, back to the 60s. This was and blatant this is incompetence. Parties. It's not professional to inter Phil, interrupt all no, the time. No, Phil, what he did was, he, he asked him a question, the this SNP is. guy turned around and started his explanation, and part of his explanation was, perhaps, Mr Neil, if you hadn't kept interrupting, interrupting Alex Salmon, Salmon, you would have got a, oh, well, that's all the time you've got, and he laughed. Yeah, of course. He actually that, turned to yeah, his guests in the that, studio, that, that, but that, that's not incompetence. It's the laughing. It's arrogant. I thought it was contempt, scandalous. And it's what yeah, yeah, it is. It and it's what un, I, well, I thought done. it was very unprofessional. That unholy British establishment alliance. But, and people across the planet yeah, have well, suffered for that for hundreds of years. Right, right. Andrew Neil got caught out yeah. he, uh, on that interview with Salmon. He didn't ask the right question. He interrupted so much that he didn't get the right answer. He didn't even get, hear the answer that he was given properly because he wasn't listening to the answer. And then he did it again when it was explained to him, this is what you did wrong, Mr. Uh, Mr. Neil, by Jamie Herbert Gibson. And all he did is, as Come said, off. Come off and laughed. I mean, what incompetence for a so-called professional interviewer is that? Be caught sure. with his pants down and they're round about his ankles now. Oh, exactly. But well, I it's quite strange because, as I said to you earlier, I watched BBC Parliament yesterday afternoon and the Scotland Newsnight team did some interviews um, with the same guy. What did you say his name was? Jamie Hepburn. Jamie Hepburn. And they had them lined up at Parliament, you know, SNP, Labour, Liberal, Tory. And when the guy asked the questions, what he did was he went down the line, gave everybody their say, starting with the SNP, outnumbered three to one. But he went back to it and let him have the last word. Hmm. And, you know, you, you begin to think, well, maybe somebody somewhere has finally clicked in that... It has to be a level playing field, you know. Depends. I, I know what I'm going to start doing my tweets. BBC, Jimmy Savile. Well, oh, that's well, well, sorry, <laughs> sorry, that's oh, look, there's one other. I mean, we've quite covered that, but there was one other very interesting part of First Minister's question time, and it was Elaine Murray. Yes, the now, witch. The, yeah, well, actually, I I did get a phone call there from a Labour Party member, uh, which uh, I won't mention her name. Um, but she did say, are the Labour Party in the Parliament on a three-line whip so that they all look like they're members of the Crankies? Um, now, if you look, I mean... It's uh, Halloween! Yes, I'm, I'm it is, but sometimes, I mean, with the banging of the desks and... Oh, but know, Elaine Murray's performance was fantastic. Straight. Yeah, yeah, it was good. Oh, it's very entertaining. The bass going like this. Very entertaining. Yeah, the little bass going. But what is this with um, now suddenly, I mean, she did say they didn't read a report and possibly, I mean, again, all politicians have got that habit of not reading to the end. They read and stop at the bit that suits them. Um, but this whole bit, I mean, the bridge is up. I mean, what was that about? No, now no, they're complaining the, about the bridge. The good, the good one with that was she basically got up and said she'd been misquoted. Yeah. And, Sa and Simon said, oh, it happens to you too. <laughs> yeah. no, I, I, I actually liked her performance. I thought it was, <coughs> there was someone there with a as, as bit as of individuality and a bit of character. Yeah, as she soon was, as she got up, the Shakespeare like, uh, came into my head, you know, was it Hubble Bubble? Yeah, well, I trouble? thought she was total witchy. I, yeah. I, 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 mean, I wrote it down, no, witchy. I mean, there's a lot of good people on, on, on both sides. The same, but I mean, it's that 
when they when they get into that pack mentality, you know, and it's, I just, it's, it's I, I just thought today the performance from both parts of the opposition were not good for Scottish politics. I mean, it was really gutter level. They were like the opposition. They were like the Sun. They they, they could have been working for Murdoch. I mean, on the whole way that they were doing it, very just, very not nice. They need. They actually need to sit down, decide what they're going to attack, because that's that's the nature of the beast in opposition. And then write out 752 million questions and pick the best one. Well, you know, it... do a bit of blue sky thinking on this one. Because, I mean, when it first broke, I, w I was sitting waiting for somebody to say, well, why didn't you ask permission to tell us what the facts were? Well, that was finally, that, that was actually asked today. Some, I think, uh, but it's at taken some point a week. It, yeah, well, what, well, one of the... She was difficult to find out what questions Joanne Lamont was asking at times. She comes out with these very long speeches, oh. and then you, and then there's a, a suddenly there's a question of about six words at the very end, and it's like, but this time they're all banging their desks, so you can't hear the question. It's a lot of really kind of in there, smart remarks, sound bites again, um, and with the face glued. I mean, she really does need to go away in an intensive course on on how to present herself as leader of the opposition. Pointing all the time. It, yeah, it just doesn't. Oh, what's, come rude. what's this bunker mentality thing with her? I mean, she's never, she's invisible apart from First Minister's questions. What? Never appears anywhere. I mean, I take it she can't stand up to questioning. Well, she looked quite good on Newsnight and um, Scotland tonight the last couple of times mm -hmm. I've seen her. But somebody's obviously writing that script for her. She doesn't remember it either. Well, she's Anna's not. Anna, Sar Anna Sarwar, I believe, he's the, the deputy leader of the Labour Party in Scotland, but he's apparently the man who's actually in charge. Well, yeah, well, she's if he's writing a script, then maybe he, maybe he should get a wee job working at the Stand Comedy House. Uh, but he'd probably get booed off because really it's all. Performance God. wise, today, up here, apart from her eyes permanently glued, but her hand, yeah. she was shaking. Well, like talking that. about that then? As we're around 15 minutes, let's get on to the score. So ah, well, go. okay. I think, uh, Joanne, I think, I think Joanne, you, you think Joanne was nervous. I thought she felt she had, you see, I, I, what, I, what I see in Joanne Lamont is they have the press behind them, the Labour Party in Scotland. 90% uh, behind them, everywhere you look. And that's what she bases a, 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 everything on. And that she stands up in First Minister's questions, believing that whatever she said will be beneficially mm. reported in, in the press. So I think she, she had a particular confidence when she started the day because of that. Um, maybe she was maybe she was nervous, expecting some kind of real big put down from Salmon, but he was being very diplomatic and statesmanlike to start with. So I mean, I'll give her huh, give her a five. I'll give her a five. I don't know if you remember that. Probably too young. Yeah, no, I remember. Thank you, Lucky Stars, I think it was. Yeah. And then, well, Ruth, I thought Ruth was. Oh. Um, I thought Ruth was completely out of order. I felt that the presiding officer should have um, censured, censured her because she just kept um, accusing Sam, Sam of being a liar, which doesn't do anything for um, a proper debate, a public debate in a, in a, in a, in a national legislature. It's, it does nothing for. Scotland, it is nothing for her nor her party. So I'll give her zero. I thought she was way out of order. She should have been but sent to the back of the room. Salmon started off statesmanlike. Um, he seemed as though he was determined to rise above whatever was coming. He could always cope. He was well enough briefed. He, whatever they could throw at him, he knew he could cope with that. But something triggered him towards the end. And he, he, he started this very passionate speech about getting out of from underneath the yoke of Westminster and almost lost his temper at, 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 just before Ruth Davidson came in. So on his score, I would say he didn't, you know, only about seven. I, I'll start with Sam. And, um, I think he lost his temper and what he did was channel that into the, the passion. Passionate piece at the end, that, I mean, it's kind of what I would do if I was in that position, I think that's why I think that. But he's, it's difficult, until the, somebody breaks rank in the press and goes, actually, he had no choice and you were a bunch of numpties for being suckered into it, it's going to be very boring for him. 
because there is only one line he can take. I couldn't release the information because I'm not allowed to. That's it. So I can understand his frustration. Joanne Lamont, uh, my, the content isn't there. She, she makes these, as you say, long statements with short questions at the end, which allows Sam and a lot of material to throw back at her. Mm. If she just got up, kept it short and sharp, Salmon would have bigger spaces to fill. Mm -hmm. More questions would get asked. Mm -hmm. You know? But obviously, tactically, I, th I think Labour Party are up their own arse, to be honest, tactically. Again, the same question, same question. You can only use those 12 words so many times. 27 words. Um, well, and she was shaking like a shaken duck. So she's obviously nervous. She should have been confident whether it's nervous being in Parliament, whether it's nervous because she's faced with salmon, and she is worried about that, you know, devastating put-down that he's mm. well capable of, I don't know. I have a sneaky feeling he's being gentle with us. Uh, I'm with you. Seven for salmon. Lamont. Lamentable Lamont. Three. Ruth Davidson. She should have been slapped down. That was out of order out of order and if that's the way it's going Salmon wants to get the boots into her too sweet I noticed um, Goldie sitting behind her not looking terribly happy she started off smiling nodding away and, and then she nodding Goldie. didn't look happy about it at all wrong I approach I wrong can't approach. imagine Goldie being, uh, no no being definitely that, not saying things like that totally different um, well I'd go with Joanne um, I'm sorry I can't forgive the incompetence now, the incompetence either is either, well, the fact that she's either incompetent or she's been deliberately and willfully incompetent with the guidelines. I mean, they're there to see. Ministerial guidelines. Yeah, the ministerial guidelines. And I just can't forgive that. I mean, sorry, you've been rooked. I mean, if you believe that perception that he hasn't bothered changing, then that's a bad mark against you and shows you you're actually incompetent again anyway. So... Um, I'll go along and I, I couldn't even give her a five. I'll give her, I'll split the difference. I'll give her four. Um, but that's just because she turned up. Um, Ruth, Ruth should actually have been asked to apologise. Um, she should be put to the standards committee. What she's done now I thought was absolutely scurrilous. Um, but then I wouldn't expect anything else. She's a Tory. She's a really nasty Tory. She gives you a nice, cheery, cheery, chubby looking look. But she's a thoroughly nasty human being. Um, Goes with goes with the territory. Salmon, um, I was actually feeling a bit. I wouldn't say sorry, but I had sympathy for him there. I mean, author of a bit of his own misfortune in allowing that perception. But then, that's their problem. Um, I'm more worried about the perception he's allowed to the greater public. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I I I I felt to it a certain extent. I thought, oh, quite. But then, but then you had a look and you thought, oh yeah, he's right. But then, why did he do it? Because. Well, common sense tells you it would come back and bite you at some time, which is what it did. I thought he handled the whole thing very well and, as you said, transferred it into a bit of passion there at the end and um, showed so, which again engendered a bit of sympathy, but I'll go along with I'll give him a seven. Can I, can I give Willie Rennie a score, please? <laughs> yes, certainly. I, I want to give Willie Rennie an eight plus. I know he didn't speak, but his performances on the television were very statesmanlike. And I think he deserves an eight plus. He also asked a different question. Yeah, you should do. You forgot to, to score Ruth. Are you, are you... Oh, Ruth, I wouldn't. I'm sorry. I mean, she was nothing. Was two two zeros in a. And yeah. what did you give her? I would give her nothing. Uh, she's below zero for me. Yeah. I'm sorry if if she believes by acting like that it's of any benefit to the Scottish Parliament. She doesn't. Yeah. Deserve so to be there. She, she she's looking, why almost... she's, she, look, Ruth is looking south of the border. Make an impression in Scotland and get offered a safe seat south of the border, like all the rest of the so-called Tory grandees in Scotland. Well, it's not just the Tories. I'm afraid the other side is almost as bad as that. Let's get down. Let's. I mean, uh, I mean, just as I can finish up on this because you'll probably appreciate it. But if there is an ever another Labour government south of the border, um, I hope all the ministers and cabinet ministers all have the soles of their shoes painted red. That way, we can spot them all in the trough. Thank you very much. <laughs>